Good morning, everyone. Good to have you around. We have our university representatives with us. We have five universities. We have University of Sheffield. We have University of Southampton, Nottingham Trent University, University of Reading, University of East Anglia. They are all here to tell us more about international admissions in this new normal. And they have various um, presentations to make within 15 minutes. And after the 15 minutes of their presentations, each university would give 15 minutes of their presentation. Then we will enable you to ask your questions. And um, we hope this webinar will be very interactive and very impacting to all our participants. Once again, you're welcome. You're welcome to Bridge House webinar series 4.0, comprising of five universities. So to start this webinar, I have with me Melissa from University of Southampton to give us the stats and uh, take the baton from me. You're welcome, Melissa. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. So, good morning to everyone now. who's joined. Good morning. Excellent. I. So, hopefully, you can now all see uh, what I'm sharing uh, with you. Um, so, as was kindly introduced, uh, my name is Melissa. I'm the regional director for Africa and the Middle East at the University of Southampton. Uh, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about us today before passing over to colleagues who will share uh, news from their own institutions. So the University of Southampton has over 150 years of history. We're a UK top 20 uh, university and we are ranked in the top 100 universities in the world. So a very strong institution as a founding member of the Russell Group and also the Worldwide Universities Network. Uh, we have over six and a half thousand international students as part of our student body um, and our total student body uh, is around 24,000 students. Uh, so our students come from all over the world and we're very proud to have many Nigerian <coughs> students, uh, including students previously from uh, Bridge House College studying with us uh, at the moment. We're located in the south of the UK, uh, so we're just over an hour by train from London, uh, which means you have convenient links to not only uh, the rest of the world, but also the UK itself. Uh, there are direct coaches from um, our university, from our campus, uh, into central London and to Heathrow Airport. Um, we also have our own airport as well, uh, which connects with uh, many cities in Europe. We have uh, a number of campuses, mm. uh, specialised campuses that you can study at across um, Southampton. Um, there are five campuses that we have, the Highfield campus, which is our main site. Uh, we have Boulderwood, which is where our engineers would be studying. We have the University Hospital, where our medical students and health science students are. Uh, we have the Waterfront campus for those in interested in oceanography and ocean sciences. Uh, and we also have the Avenue campus, which is where our humanities students study. So those interested in language. We also have uh, the Winchester campus, which is our School of Art. Uh, and we do have a hub campus in Malaysia where students can go and study engineering or business um, programmes. The city of Southampton itself, as you can see in the top right hand corner, we obviously have our Premiership football team. Uh, we have theatres, bars, restaurants, uh, we have a huge shopping mall, we have a marina. Uh, so we're a port city um, and we also have lots of nice green open space. So it's a real variety within the city uh, and also in the surrounding area. Um, so there are very easy links to places that include the beautiful beaches, the new forest, uh, where there are wild ponies. Uh, and also historic sites too. So lots to see and do whilst you're doing the studies. Uh, the university is very proud of its research intensive education. So uh, all of our education is 
driven by the researchers that we have and the areas that we're specialists in. And we're looking at developing next generation leaders in all of the disciplines uh, that we have and ensure that even our undergraduate students engage at the forefront of research that is being conducted at the university. In terms of resources, obviously at the moment our students have been working remotely and we have um, a fantastic virtual environment where students can access all of their files, software, their email and the university network wherever they are in the world. Uh, when students are on campus or are close to campus, we have Wi-Fi across all of the um, campuses, which means that students can really fit their learning around what they're doing. Um, our libraries, uh, which until recently were, were closed due to the pandemic, are now open. Um, we offer a click and collect service, but we also offer digital access to all of our resources. So again, even when there are limits on how you may be able to travel, um, you can still access all of the resources that you need to ensure that your education uh, isn't diminished in any way. We have a brand new centenary building which has very large open lecture spaces uh, which will be utilised uh, in September uh, when our students return. Uh, we have free in-sessional English language support. Uh, what that means is not just learning um, how to teach people where English isn't their first language, which we obviously know in Nigeria it is, um, but it enables you to do study skills as well. So it helps you to, to boost the skills that you've already learned whilst at Bridge House uh, and really improve those um, throughout all of your years of study so that you get the best results possible. We have lots of arts and culture. So just because you're studying um, a particular subject doesn't mean you don't want to be involved in the arts. Um, so we have uh, Turner Sims Concert Hall where we have a symphony orchestra. Um, we have theatres, we have art galleries, uh, and we have over 40 performing arts societies that students can join in with. So whatever you're interested in, we really do have it covered. Uh, in terms of the subjects that we offer, we have five faculties at the university. There are very few subjects that Southampton doesn't offer, um, but we cover everything from the arts. Uh, we do engineering and physical sciences, so we have all types of engineering offered. Uh, we do environmental and life sciences, and that includes our health sciences programme, so uh, nursing, uh, midwifery, as well as other options uh, in geography and our ocean sciences. Uh, we have the Faculty of Medicine, uh, and we also have social sciences where you can study subjects such as law or business. So we have 65 different subject areas within those. Uh, we offer studies at all different levels, so uh, for all of you uh, who studied at Bridge House, uh, you wouldn't need a foundation year with us, you would come into the undergraduate level. Uh, and I will share this presentation afterwards so that all of the links that you can see you'll be able to select, um, so that you'll go straight through to all of our undergraduate information and you can look through all of the courses uh, that we have. In terms of applications, if you haven't already applied to Southampton um, or you're looking at applying next year or the year after, um, then you would need to do so through UCAS uh, for year one applications. Uh, there are some circumstances in which direct applications are possible, but they tend to be at foundation level and for postgraduate students. Um, so you can do that in the future once you have your bachelor's uh, degrees. Our tuition fees range from um, 17,500 to uh, 21,500 apart from medicine, which has uh, a higher fee. You do, don't have to pay this all in one go. This can be paid either in full or upon your enrolment uh, or in three installments throughout the academic year. So we try to be as flexible as possible when it comes to making these payments. You can do this online or via bank transfer um, and we can support you with that as well. Uh, in terms of scholarships, depending on your level of study, there are different scholarships available. We have an automatic international merit scholarship for undergraduate students. So if you're coming to us for your bachelor's degree, then you will need to, um, you don't need to make an application, you just automatically get considered uh, for that scholarship based on the academic grades that you receive either in your A-levels or in your Bridge House Foundation programme. In terms of accommodation, we guarantee accommodation to all our international students for the full duration of your undergraduate programme uh, and also for your master's studies if you choose to stay with us for that as well. Um, we have undergraduate and postgraduate specific halls, 
So um, you won't necessarily be with um, students that are studying at a different level to you. And we do our very best to um, ensure that there is a diverse mix of students within each accommodation. So you wouldn't necessarily be with Nigerian students uh, and you wouldn't necessarily be with students from your, uh, your own course. However, for students joining us this year, there may be some, there's likely to be some differences to that where we try to create um, social bubbles to ensure that if social distancing is remains as restrictive as it is now or um, as it starts to ease or maybe get stricter, we can ensure that your learning isn't impacted uh, whilst you're with us. Uh, in terms of your well-being and sa uh, safety, there are a range of support services available to you, both through our Student Services Centre and Enabling Services. Uh, we have campus security that operates 24 hours a day, every day of the year. Uh, so even on the very few days that the university is officially closed, which is normally between Christmas and New Year, uh, and an extra two days over the Easter period, um, our campus security and other facilities are still available to you during that time. We have a fantastic Nigerian Student Society who keep me, but you can spend time with them. You don't have to be a part of that society if you don't want to, um, but it's a really fantastic way to engage with the Nigerian student community that we have, um, which spreads across all of our subject areas. We offer a free meet and greet service to all international students. Um, who are arriving with us and that service will still be offered this year. So any students who are coming to Southampton this year, we will still be picking those students up from the airport to ensure that they safely get to the university um, as per any of the government requirements that are in place in September. In terms of opportunities, we have Future Worlds, which is a startup accelerator. So for all the budding entrepreneurs, uh, they can take part in a various uh, in various activities so that you can boost your own business prospects while studying. Uh, we also have entrepreneurship modules that students on any subject area can take uh, as an elective module. So that really offers you that opportunity to boost your employment prospects. We also have industry placements and a, and a year in employment. These are paid placements that students can do. It's part of your visa. Um, when you come to us so you don't need an additional work visa in order to participate in that and any students coming to us from this September would benefit from the new graduate route uh, which would allow you to stay for a certain period of time after your visa uh, your student visa would normally finish uh, in order to conduct work as well so it really gives you that opportunity uh, to boost your prospects for the future. When looking at Southampton and Nigeria together uh, we really are nurturing next generation talent. We're increasing the number of joint programmes that we offer with Nigerian institutions and UK institutions. We have lots of short course training opportunities uh, and we have a fantastic Nigerian alumni network that we work with uh, to support them in a variety of activities. We also have a dedicated member of staff based in Lagos, um, Abi Oda Moses. Unfortunately, for personal reasons, he can't be with me today um, or joining today. Obviously, he wouldn't be in the UK with me. Um, but he can support with both academic and visa applications as well. Um, but I know that your um, counselling team at Bridge House are fantastic, so have many, much of this already covered. Um, when looking at 2020 um, in particular, there are a number of things that we are um, doing in addition to what we would normally do uh, to support students. So in terms of our admissions policy, we are carefully considering the impact that um, restrictions in your education will have had uh, on your, um, your studies and the grades that you receive. Um, so we do not automatically say no to a student that has missed out on their grades. Um, I would also stress that if you haven't already applied to Southampton and you're considering doing so for 2020, um, you can do so via our international clearing. So you can connect with us and we can give you, um, if your grades meet the standard that we're looking for, we can look at making an offer in principle to you uh, based on some other action that you would need to take. Um, our teaching and learning models will be different this year. Um, we will still ensure that all students meet the learning objectives of their programmes, uh, but there, this will be done via a blended learning model. So um, our lectures will not be as large scale as they normally have been. 
Um, so face-to-face -face teaching will still take place, but the groups will be much smaller than previously. So students joining us this September will not be in lecture theatres of 300 students as they may have been uh, for large modules as part of their course or the compulsory modules. Uh, they will be in much smaller groups uh, as well as having personal time with their tutors uh, and smaller group activity as well. Uh, in terms of visa applications, we're supporting students through that. Uh, we'll shortly start issuing CASs for students who are unconditional with us. Um, and we're also supporting the travel preparations as well. So for, for students who are coming to Southampton, we'll be sending out communications uh, in the next two weeks explaining that you can arrive early uh, to the university. So we're encouraging students to get to us when they can prior to the start date of teaching. Uh, and we are extending the latest start date that students can arrive uh, by a few weeks than is normally the case so that we give students a much larger window in which to arrive. Uh, for any students who um, do arrive early, they will not pay for their accommodation until the point um, where they would normally start paying for their accommodation. So for us, that would be a week prior to teaching beginning. So if a student, for example, arrives with us in the first week of September, the first two weeks of their accommodation uh, would be at no cost to the student. So we are ensuring that you can come to us and meet the quarantine requirements that are currently in place. Uh, and we're providing support that includes bedding packs um, and food supplies for the first few days as a minimum to ensure that you are able to arrive safely uh, and you can settle into the university uh, and meet with staff such as myself, but at um, appropriate distance. Um, so that we can make sure that you are welcomed uh, as warmly as we would like you to be. Uh, in terms of finance, I've spoken about tuition fees already. We understand that there are some difficulties in making payments at the moment uh, from Nigerian banks. Um, so if you require letters to demonstrate to the bank that you want uh, to pay your tuition fees and you need those fees um, listed more clearly um, or in a different way, all you need to do is contact me and we can get those letters issued to you. Um, for students who um, either are thinking about 2020 or the future, we have some fantastic social media accounts. Um, many of them are student led. So um, you can actually see the images that our students are taking, both of themselves and of campus uh, and of the university and the activities that they participate in. Um, and we'd really encourage you to, to follow those accounts so that you can see what it's really like um, to be at Southampton. Uh, in terms of the final point, um, the University of Southampton is very proud of what we've been doing to support the fight against COVID-19. Um, there are links um, within the presentation that you can click on to watch um, a short video that we've made uh, about what we've done. One of those things is the Perso respirator. Um, what that is, is a mobile respirator that each clinician um, can wear. Um, so it's a hood that goes over their head uh, and it has a filter attached to it. Um, what that does um, with a motor, what that does is cleans the air that's coming into the hood. Um, it means that patients can see the full face of the professional that is dealing with them rather than them being masked, uh, which is shown to support um, patient care um, and their well-being. Um, but what's fantastic about this is the design was made um, from, cre from the cre thought of the design all the way through to the actual creation in just under four weeks. Um, it is made with off-the-shelf component parts and we have shared the design um, open source across the world so that anyone in the world can build these respirators um, with those off-the-shelf um, component parts available in all parts of the world um, so that we can support the protection of healthcare professionals who are leading the fight uh, against COVID. That is all from me uh, for now. Thank you all very much for listening um, and I look forward to any questions at the end. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you for doing justice to your presentation. Thank so um, we have, can you, okay. We have our next presenter, University of Sheffield. Uh, hello, good morning. Good morning, everybody. You're welcome, sir. Can you hear me? Thank you, thank you. Um, so today I will be conducting a demonstration um, between myself, Adam Brown, and uh, University of Sheffield's in-country officer, 
um, Dami, who is on the call as well. So I'll be starting the presentation. I'm just going to share my screen and then Dami will be continuing with the presentation as we go along. <laughs> Okay, I'm hoping you can all see this. Yes, we can. No, no, yeah, okay, thank you very much, thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, so good morning again. Um, my name's Adam Brown. I'm from the University of Sheffield. Um, for those of you that haven't encountered the University of Sheffield before, it's a university in the north of England. Um, it's been teaching for about over 100 years. Um, it was first founded as a medical college teaching medicine and dentistry in the early days, um, but has since expanded to encompass all of the major areas of science. So we tend to think of it as a STEM university focusing on science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Um, however, it does have a lot of other areas of excellence as well. The building that you're looking at in, um, in this picture is the first university building which was built on the site. It was built to house the biomedical science students um, and to this day they're still teaching biomedical science in that building. Um, my name's Adam Brown and Dami um, Osekun is going to be speaking in a minute as well. So this is a picture of the university, this is further down the hill in the university, um, which shows really the um, forward looking nature of the university. So we still hold on to our roots, we hold on to our tradition, but we are looking at the future, we're looking at, uh, we're making huge investment really in this picture, we're focusing on the engineering school. Um, we are in the top one in the world, we're a founding member as well of the prestigious Russell Group, um, we're in the top 50 most international universities. We have about 2,800, no, 28,000, sorry, 28,000 students on the campus um, and about 7,000 of those are international students from about 140 different countries. So in total, we tend to say wherever you're from, wherever you have a passport from, you'll tend to find somebody who is um, also from your background, from a similar background. So you're not going to feel too... Um, isolated when you come, you really feel part of a strong community. So I'm going to pass over to Dami now. Um, I'm hoping she can hear me. Yes, yes, I'm okay. here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> good morning, everyone. Um, so I'm just going to carry on um, the presentation. So as Adam mentioned earlier, I'm the um, income to representative for the University of Sheffield. Um, I've actually visited Bridge House a few times, um, and I'm hoping um, that once you know everything gets back to normal, I would look forward to doing that again. All right, so just to continue on uh, with the presentation, so uh, what you can see in front of you um, are a list of some of the um, industries or a, a list of some of the companies that we have partnerships with that students can actually get the opportunity to either um, sort of have a placement year with or have an internship with and so on. Um, we offer quite a few courses where you can um, sort of have a one year placement. Um, so, you know, some these are basically some of, of, of many um, of the companies where you can actually do um, study that with. Next slide, please. Um, so I know quite a few, um, quite a lot of students are usually interested in scholarships and we do have scholarships um, mostly for higher achieving students. Um, obviously there are, um, there's an automatic scholarship for students who accept their offer um, by a certain date. Most students are made aware of this as soon as they apply and it goes up to about £2,500. We also have a, a specific merit scholarship which students can apply for. Undergraduate students will get 50% off their tuition um, if they're chosen for this scholarship and it continues as long as they maintain a 60% average um, throughout their, year, their years of study. Um, and for postgraduate students, it's up to about 125 students. But for undergrad, up to 50 students um, can actually um, benefit from this 50% scholarship. Next slide, please. So the University of Sheffield campus is a very inclusive, um, a very diverse um, campus. We offer quite a lot of um, benefits to students. Um, our 
Student Union, for example, has been top in the UK um, for many years running. And this is actually um, sort of based on polls um, that are, you know, um, decided by students. Um, so obviously students get a fantastic um, experience when they study with us. This is what the campus would, or the student union would usually look like. But obviously because of um, the current situation, the pandemic and so on, um, it's unlikely to look this full um, this September. But I can, you know, hopefully when everything gets back to normal, um, you know, all the activities will continue as they used to. Next slide, please. So I mentioned earlier about our um, student union being one of the top um, or sort of the top in the UK, the number one student union. Um, it, you know, this is because, you know, the management of the union is actually, um, stu are actually students um, and any student can actually opt or be selected or voted um, to be, um, so to represent the student union. Um, there are a lot of um, sort of activities that go on in the union. There are a lot of um, events. There are a lot of um, places where students can hang out, where students can enjoy themselves, where students can eat. Um, so, you know, it's a good combination of, of a social space and a creative space where students are allowed um, to be themselves. Um, in terms of advice and guidance, um, you know, the student union offers like, an, you know, uh, the student services where you can discuss um, sort of immigration and you know a few other um, areas that are of um, of interest or, or or that students are um, or any student is having issues with. Um, you have the opportunity as well of a job shop where students who may be interested in getting part time positions can get. Um, uh, information about um, sort of part-time work either within the university or outside. Um, um, we know quite a, lo a lot of our students at the moment who are sort of um, who have part-time jobs and have taken advantage of the job shop. Um, another great thing about the job shop as well is that they help you prepare for interviews um, they help you um, organize your CV to make sure that it's, um, you know, top notch and you're basically ready um, to go out into the workforce. Next slide, please. So in terms of accommodation, um, all our international students are guaranteed student accommodation, regardless of when you um, apply or um, are um, given your offer to study. Um, so even if you come in through clearing, for example, which um, has started, you can actually get access to student accommodation. Um, our accommodation has been voted in the top five of UCAP accommodation for six years in a row and in terms of security and maintenance um, it's one of the things that students are ab absolutely impressed by um, where accommodation is concerned the fact that they feel secure they, um, sort of opt in to use it so um, we always make sure that everything is um, ready for the students um, who are starting a new academic year and that they're always kept comfortable um, throughout their time in the accommodation next slide please um, so Sheffield is actually quite central, so you can get, you know, basically anywhere in the UK um, from the University of Sheffield, either by a coach, train, um, cab, you know, whichever is more comfortable. Um, at the moment, the University of Sheffield does not have an international airport, so we can, um, you can fly in from Manchester or London. At the moment, we have a um, welcome service, uh, which students would need to apply for or opt for um, from Manchester, where you can um, get transported from the um, Manchester airport um, to your accommodation in Sheffield. Um, as you can see, it's only about 45 minutes and it will, you know, gives um, a lot of students up for that because it gives them an opportunity to, start to meet people um, who are currently, you know, in the same position as them, possibly it's their first time and so on. Um, and you can start to sort of make friends and meet people um, from that journey. Next slide, please. In terms of affordability, the University of the, uh, the University of Sheffield um, is one of the most affordable cities as well. Um, it's one of the um, 
four big cities in the UK. So it has everything you could possibly want in a city. Um, as Adam mentioned previously, it's a good combination of um, a city whereby um, there's a lot of history, but it's also quite more modern as well. So you have a uh, lot of new buildings, lots of um, um, at the same, lots of greenery, and at the same time you have a lot of um, buildings that have been very, very well um, maintained um, that students can actually um, have a look at and see that they've been there for years and years, but are still um, sort of fantastic places to visit. Um, in terms of, um, you know, purchases and so on at the University of Sh uh, in Sheffield, the city, um, you know, you while you have a high standard um, of production and quality and so on, um, you al also have, um, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to spend as much to get it, basically. Next mm. slide. Oh, I just wanted to mention on that point that um, statistically, everything that Danny's saying is absolutely correct. From a statistic, statistical perspective, um, Sheffield is 25% cheaper than London, and it's 10% cheaper than the national average. So you really will save a lot of money living in Sheffield that you can use to explore the rest of the UK. Um, yeah, back to you, Dami. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. All right, so just to give a bit of an uh, update on um, what we've done, uh, or, or a few of the things that we've done to support um, students during the COVID um, situation. Um, next slide, please. Um, we have um, an FAQ on our website, um, which I'm sure um, Bridge House would be happy to share with any, uh, with the link, um, we'll be happy to share the link with um, anyone who would like to sort of see responses to um, a lot of the questions that have been raised um, during this period, but I'll do my best to cover some of them um, in this presentation. So in terms of admission support, um, we're doing our best to be very flexible. We know that, you know, it's an unusual um, time and um, a lot of things are different. Uh, for example, we just recently heard that um, students won't be taking WIAC and so on. So, you know, we know that, you know, this, um, a lot of different things have been affected um, by the current situation. So we are doing our best to be as flexible as possible when it comes to um, our requirements. Um, however, we still need to maintain quality and fairness um, in uh, recruiting or in admitting students. Um, the tuition fee deposit fund policy um, is, is um, more information on that is available um, on our website, but basically um, students are um, you know, once a deposit has been paid, which is, this is mostly for postgraduate students, actually, um, you can actually um, get a refund on that. Um, so for undergraduate students, we're still looking at um, students starting with us on the 28th of September. Um, we understand um, that obviously, a lot of the um, induction activities, i.e. Freshers Week, uh, which a lot of students look forward to, um, still need to happen. So they will, they still will be happening. However, a lot of it will be online. Um, but you know, all the freebies that students will usually get um, will still be available. Um, in terms of teaching and learning, there would be um, a, good, a blend of face-to-face -face learning um, in small groups. Um, so definitely not you know the huge lecture hall with you know packed with students that it would usually be um, previously. Um, but this would be supported by um, digital delivery. So basically, there will be um, students who gain access to quite a lot of online. Um, sort of um, teach. Next slide, please. So the graduate immigration route, um, I'm sure um, quite a few people are aware of that, but basically in the UK, students are now allowed for, um, from summer of 2021, so students who graduate from 2021 uh, will be allowed to apply for um, this uh, post-study work visa, um, whereby they will be um, allowed to stay and work um, full-time um, when they have um, completed their degree. Um, so basically this was uh, recently or introduced last year and um, you know, one that we believe that a lot of international students are quite happy to hear about, um, whereby they get the opportunity to gain experience um, and learn a lot more um, by being in the... Next slide, please. 
All right. That's all of the slides. Um, uh, sorry, I'm just going to go back a, a few, just to clarify a few points from um, from from this slide. Um, the tuition is available for students who have paid a deposit, but then because of travel restrictions, aren't able to come and study um, in the university. And the other point that I wanted to clarify there is that um, our postgraduate courses have been delayed to start in uh, the 26th, 26th of October this year. So um, any offer holders for postgraduate courses will have already been contacted, uh, reminding them or informing them rather that their course dates are going to be delayed until the 26th of October. Um, but uh, it also means that if you are still considering which university to go to and the one you are thinking about is delaying until January, the University of Sheffield can still accept your postgraduate application. Um, they're the two main things that I wanted to mention. And then with regard to um, accommodation, if we go all the way back here, ta -da. Um, the university this year in response to COVID is giving uh, two, year, two, two weeks free accommodation for students arriving before the start of their course date. Um, and this is to allow for the uh, quarantine measures that UK government has put in place at the moment. So at the moment when you come to the UK, you need to um, self isolate and um, because of that reason, the university is offering these two weeks for free in university accommodation. So, um, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dami. Is there um, anything else that you wanted to say? No, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for listening and uh, we look forward to your questions. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dami. Thank you, Adam. You did well. So um, for the next presentation, we have University of East Anglia. So Dami, um, Debbie, please, can you come yeah. on to share? All right. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can, audibly. All right, good morning. Let me try and share my screen and let me know if you can see that. All right then. Is that clear now? Yep. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Hi, everyone. Good morning. My name is Debbie Oko. I am the recruitment manager for Sahara Africa for the University of East Anglia, which I will be um, mentioning as UEA because that's what we popularly call ourselves. And I'm going to talk about this presentation really quickly. I will try not to take too much of, the of, of time. I'll just give quick facts about the university, the location, our facilities and services, um, our faculty um, requirements, and what we're doing towards September um, and in response to the COVID-19 situation. Right, so we were founded in 1963 and we're that's one of the top 25 universities in the UK. We are also top 200 in the world, according to the Times Higher Education um, World University ranking. And we also have the highest teaching um, excellence award, which is the Gold Teaching Excellence Award. And we're very proud you know, of that. Um, so I like to say this for, I, I know we have a mix of parents and students watching us. Uh, but I like to say this for students a lot. We are home to the Avengers. And if you are a movie lover and you've watched the Avengers series, there is the headquarters of the Avengers movies. Um, and I'm proud to say that that was, you know, shot at the University of East Anglia, which is our Sainsbury Center for Visual Arts. That's the building right there. Okay, so the Avengers headquarters is actually real and it's at UEA. <laughs> And this is the front of the building. Okay. All right, so where are we located? Um, one of the questions I get asked a lot is where is UEA? And simply because we are called UEA, and we're not called the University of a city. We're located in the city called Norwich, which is on the east side of England, about an hour away from Cambridge. Okay, so ideally we should be called the University of Norwich, but we are not. We are the University of East Anglia, but just so you have an idea of where we're located, we're at the east 
side. So when you think East Anglia, just think East England, and you know that we're, that's where we're located. And we are about um, less than two hours from London by train. This is an overview of the city of Norwich. It's a beautiful city and it's a very green um, city. Um, this is a popular place within the city center. Okay, so let's talk about the university itself. Now, this is an overview, an aerial view of the University of East Anglia. Um, and everything you see in this picture actually belongs to the university, including that lake. And the lake is actually um, opposite the, the most popular accommodation buildings. Um, very popular with undergraduate students because of the greenery in front of it and also because of the lake and every room within this accommodation overlook the lake so students love you know this accommodation a lot okay so what facilities do we have what do we really have to offer I'm just going to mention a few of them. We have a 24-hour library. We used to boast that our libraries never shut until COVID came and took the upper hand. So we actually got shut this year, but our libraries actually do never get shut. And it's a 24-hour library that's always operational, even during holidays and Christmas period. We have um, over 80 sports clubs for students who are interested in clubs and interested in sports. So regardless of whatever sports activity you're interested in, basketball, badminton, wheelchair basketball, fencing, cricket, you name it, we have a club for most sporting activity. We have an Olympic site swimming pool, which is also one we're really proud of because we actually do hold um, inter-schools and inter in inter schools competition and also have like the every day where we have University of Essex who we always weep. <laughs> They're not here so I can say that. Um, but yeah, so we have that um, Olympics I see in a museum but a beautiful building where like I said is home to the Avengers and the Queen attacks that we've got in them. Campus restaurants, definitely modern teaching facilities, top notch. So what are the faculties that we've got? We've got four main faculties. We've got the Faculty of Science, Arts and Humanities, Medicine and Health Science, and Social Sciences. We do not have a faculty for engineering, but we have engineering courses under our science faculty. And the reason is because we do not um, have too many um, engineering courses at master's level, we only um, offer a course in energy engineering, but at undergraduate level, we have courses in mechanical engineering, energy engineering, and electronics and elect elect electrical and electronics um, engineering, which is why we don't have um, a, a faculty of engineering. But we've got various subjects and various courses span across these four faculties. And <clears throat> Excuse me, and they include economics, occupational therapy. Um, our medical school is one I should talk about because we have our own teaching hospital. We have the Norwich and Norfolk Teaching Hospital. So our medical for our medical students, they get to be hands on from the first year of you know their medical um, um, year, their medical study, which is an advantage. Whereas in some other schools, they get to be hands-on from like second or third year, but our medical students get to actually have a hospital experience from the first year because we have our own teaching hospital. Uh, I'm not gonna mention all the subjects, but we have a whole uh, a wide range of subjects that cater to different um, student needs. So one other question that students ask a lot is about careers, and parents also ask this question: How do you help with getting a um, with setting students on the right path, you know, on the right career path? What do you actually do to support students 
outside of studying. We've got what we call the Career Central. And Career Central is um, located within the center of the university. And it's, it's located in the place where students cannot miss seeing it. It's, it's, it's the, the signpost is actually quite big and it's, it was done deliberately to attract students' attention. So when you arrive at school, one of the first places you should visit is Career Central. Why? Because they, they, operate, they organize a lot of internships, workshops, employer visits, events, um, job posting, job um, vacancies. You can find them, you know, not just the jobs that you, you, can, you can find when you're studying, but also the jobs that you can find after studying. Career Central is the place to go. Um, we also have the study abroad and year in industry for some courses and Career Central is one place where you can, you know, go to to get um, clear, a uh, clear idea of where you want to start, where you want to have like a year, your year in industry and what it entails. With regards to the new graduate employment route, again, the Career Central is one place to go to. And there, we actually support um, students up to three years after graduation, which means that you can always come back to the campus uh, or you can always email the Career Central or have access to some of the, the, the things that are being offered. You have access to the job site, you have access you know, to job postings, even up to three years after you've graduated. Okay, um, so our typical entry requirement, I mean, for students of Bridge House College, we do accept your foundation year, so that's very good. And we've, we've, we've worked with Bridge House for a long time now, and over the, the years, we've been able to ascertain what your foundation year is like as compared to our A-levels and our foundation year, and we are able to accept um, Bridge House College foundation, foundation year. We also accept our WIC English, uh, so for some courses, you may need to write the IELTS, but for some other courses, we accept the WIAG English for, of C6 and above. What's the tuition fees like? Um, for undergraduates, um, um, undergraduates um, courses, the minimum you would find is about 15,900 up to as much as 20,000 200 or 50,000 in the case of medicine. Um, but, but what we've done is we have a very flexible uh, payment plan for students with regards to making tuition deposits. And I'm going to talk about that, I think, in the next um, slide or so. All right. So, yeah. Fees are between fifteen thousand nine hundred and twenty thousand. But what do we what do we do to support um, students? We've got an undergraduate scholarship scheme, which gives as much as ten thousand um, pounds in scholarship for every year of study, if it is something that the, the, the student is um, privileged to get. It's not automatic, though. You have to write. I mean, students will have to write a an essay and it's just a very simple essay of about 250 words and just tell us why you would like to come to UEA and what coming to UEA will do for you for your future plans and your future objectives and the things you like about the university. 250 words, we have students who get these scholarships as long as you write a glowing um, um, essay. Um, oh, and these scholarships of course are open to all courses except medicine and health uh, courses. Um, we also have in pipe, the pipeline a dedicated Bridge House scholarship scheme, um, which I will communicate into Bridge House right about now because I do not have um, confirmation on that yet, but we have that in the pipeline and it's something that we'll, we've, we've done before for Bridge House College, which I think we will also do again this year for students from Bridge House College to help alleviate the um, tuition payment. So our accommodation, we have a range of accommodation areas. I mean, this is something that I really like about UEA. We tend to put, we tend to put our, our, ourselves in the student's shoes and then we try to meet students' needs you know, across board. So different accommodation areas, you have uh, postgraduate accommodation area, 
undergraduate accommodation area, if all you want to do is be with um, undergraduate students like yourself, um, you have low alcohol areas where if you don't want to be in a place in, in an accommodation area where there's a lot of partying or students are drinking. We have quiet leaving, which means you don't want any noise. You're happy to go into your accommodation and come out quietly. We have a designated area, you know, for quiet leaving. We have a designated area for for students in the health and medicine um, faculty, and we also have. A designated um, accommodation area for students with um, disability and there are different kinds of accommodation different types different choices a whole range of choices single um, standard single single shared on suite um, uh, premier accommodation of course we know because of the coronavirus situation we will not be operating the shared accommodation this year but that's something that we have because the shared accommodation is actually a lot cheaper than some of the other accommodation. Our accommodation is guaranteed for all international students. So as a first year undergraduate student, you have absolutely no fear of where to leave because we guarantee accommodation for every international student, at, at least for the first year of study. And all you need to do is make sure you fill the accommodation application form by the 31st of July, and you will be allocated an accommodation or a room. So what have we done with regards to this COVID-19 situation? How are we planning to resume um, in September or are we going to resume in September? Yes, we are. So we still plan to resume in September. Result classes begin, um, I think, on the 28th of September. What we've done is we've moved all our classes online, but and we, we're going to be operating what we call the blended learning system, which means that a lot of a lot of classes will be done online, but there also will be a lot of face-to-face -face, um, um, interaction and smaller groups for seminars. So for classes where we usually would have a large group. We're, we're going to break them down into smaller groups with social distancing in place and all the rules re re regarded, um, required for this COVID situation in place. So we're operating the blended learning. We've also put in a lot more flexibility for late arrivals. So usually we would put a flexibility of about two to three weeks, but now we you know, increase it up to six weeks. So you can arrive up to six weeks late, what you need to do is register for your course and begin your classes online even prior to when you arrive at school. So you don't miss out on anything. You might miss out with regard to you know, the smaller groups that, of um, seminars that you, you ordinarily would have attended. But because you have, I mean, because we have allowed for that flexibility, you don't really miss out on schoolwork. You can you know, submit your assignments online to when you arrive at school um, up to six weeks. So that will be about the middle of November. We put in that flexibility. Um, we've also expanded our English language um, test requirements. So usually we will just accept the IELTS and um, the, the Pearson. But now we've expanded it to, you know, we accept the IELTS indicator, we accept the home TOEFL, we accept um, password Duolingo, and we also have our into processional English, which we are running this year for free for students who are able to arrive early. So you can sign up for the English into processional, and once you finish the processional and you, you qualify and you get your English qualification, then you can move on to your first year. And that is actually embedded in your tuition fees. So, We've, we've tried to put a lot of things and effort in place because we do understand that um, several people have got, you know, different um, different situations that they've got to deal with, and the pandemic has affected everyone in different ways. So we put that in place as well, and we have our experts that have been advising the government and speaking of. We've also had staff and students involved in you know, create, um, producing hand sanitizers and making PPE. And that's one way of giving back to the community. So we have, we all, what we've also done is to have a dedicated um, page for our, for new students. 
It's a frequently asked questions page and you can click on this link and it will take you straight there. I probably will send this um, to Eniola after now. Um, and there are lots of questions on that page that I may not have you know, touched while talking, but questions, I would put out questions that we've been asked over time and answers to those questions on that page. Okay, so deadline for tuition, deposit, and accommodation. I've mentioned the accommodation is 31st of July. Um, tuition deposit for PG students is 31st of July. Undergraduate students do not require to pay any deposit before they, they resume. Um, but if you want to pay a deposit, then I advise that you pay a £2,000 deposit. We have allowed, up, we, I mean, we've always had this, but again, I will just reiterate it that we have up to eight installment payment plans. Um, so you can decide to pay termly, which is in three installments, or you pay monthly throughout the duration of your course, which is in eight installments. We're gonna be issue out CASIS very soon. We've been receiving a lot of deposits and that's, um, uh, we're gonna be issue, issuing the CASIS very soon, as soon as we get the green light that um, UKBI has, reopened um, visa application um, submission. I've talked about the guaranteed accommodation. Okay, I haven't talked about free accommodation. So the UK government has said that when you arrive in the UK, you have to compulsorily quarantine yourself for two weeks, which is 14 days. And in response to that, we are offering free accommodation to students who arrive between the third and uh, I think between the 3rd of September up to the 11th or 12th of September, if you're able to arrive on time, we will, you will not have to pay for that accommodation. We are looking to extend this, but we need to have all students um, apply for accommodation by the 31st of July. So we have a, a good idea of how many students we're expecting and how much we can occupy, how many students we can occupy in our accommodation building. And then we can look to extend um, the free accommodation. We also are issuing invoices for tuition fees. That's something that is very prevalent in Nigeria. Sometimes you go to the bank and they tell you that they want you to have a tuition um, invoice. We are issuing invoice. You just need to contact us and let us know. Some banks can take your payment with just your offer letter, but some banks will require you to have um, a, a proper performer invoice and we, we can also issue that. One other thing we've put in place is we've dedicated um, since the beginning of July up until September or even beyond, we've dedicated, uh, um, we have dedicated international office staff. Uh, we have what we call the Meet Us. Meet Us is a forum where you can book to speak with members of the international office, ask questions, um, and, you know, just block out a time to share your fears and then we can just, you know, allay your fears, tell you what you need to know, point you to the right people that you can speak with and generally just give you up-to-date information. And one other thing that we are also putting in place for September is that we will welcome you and, you know, take you to the university campus for free when you arrive into the Norwich International Airport. There is an international airport in Norwich and you can fly into Norwich via KLM. So there, are, these are a few useful links that you could um, check out. We have a Facebook page, we have a YouTube channel, and we have a Nigeria page as well. And you can check out more information regarding um, Nigeria specifically on these pages. We have a dedicated Nigerian student ambassador, um, her name is Destiny. You can also contact Destiny and speak to her. I mean, everyone is working remotely and so, so is she. You can speak to her regards, um, asking questions about how um, students fare on campus, how is the Nigerian community, how is the West African community, and Destiny will be very much happy to um, answer your questions. So. I am done. Um, thank you so much for listening. There's so many more, more things I would have liked to say, but for time, um, I will just hand back over to Eniola. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you for the presentation. Okay, um, you're welcome. Let me just try and stop sharing my screen okay. and find the thank video. <laughs> so we have next.
University of Reading, Udochi. Once Debbie stops sharing her screen, then you. Okay, I back. think I've gotten it. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Debbie. Thanks. So, University okay. of Reading, Udochi, please, you can unmute your mic. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Udo, and I work for the University of Reading, um, the um, country's manager for Sub Saharan Africa. And um, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about my university, some of the requirements, and some updates about what we've done with regard to the COVID 19 pandemic. So I'm going to share my screen now. I believe uh, everybody's seen. Yes, screen. we can see your screen. Thanks. Perfect. Okay. So I just need to. All right. So, uh, like I said earlier, uh, I work for the University of Reading. So, I'm actually going to be taking you through the um, updates from the University of Reading and some of the requirements since we're going to be covering the 2020s to 2021 uh, prospective students. So just a little bit about uh, the University of Reading history. Uh, we used to be an extension college of the University of Oxford before we received Royal Charter and became the University of Reading. So we've had over 150 years of existence and teaching with excellence. We also have um, a world-renowned um, business school, which is called the Henley Business School. It used to be the Henley Management College, um, but now it's now part of the University of Reading. So it's now um, our business school and it's triple accredited um, by Euro, by the US and uh, by the UK as well. So where exactly are we? We are not so far from um, London. We're 30 minutes to 25 minutes from, um, sorry, 25 minutes from London by train. And if you look at where the um, arrow is, where Costa is, you can see Reading here and then you can see London not so far. So we're just, um, I would call us neighbours, we're not too far from each other. And the Heathrow Airport, we are 40 to 45 minutes by road from the Heathrow Airport, um, which makes it an easy access from students who uh, are coming from different parts of the world to the university. We actually have um, um, a bus of writing on campus where students can um, take the rail air bus and get to the campus directly. It, the um, Reading also gives opportunity to um, access to different um, other cities like Oxford and uh, other towns rather, Oxford, Stratford, Open Avon and all of that. We also are a busy hub. Um, I used to call us the um, UK Silicon Valley, and that's because we are right in the center of uh, top IT firms, different firms like um, IBM, Microsoft, Sony, Delhi. They have their um, um, offices right around us. And so students who come in to study um, computer science can actually have um, an, an opportunity to work with these organizations right after their studies or while doing the IT placement. Just to give you a little insight on how the uh, city center of Reading looks like. This the picture is, um, we have a lake right in the city center, which makes it even more beautiful. Uh, we also have a gigantic structure, which we call, or which is called the Oracle. If you see the, the first picture by the left, it's the gigantic building that houses over 80 shops. Uh, which gives um, um, students um, an opportunity to get whatever they want at very cost-effective prices. And then a, a broader picture of um, the city center, where the lake is uh, situated with lots of shops and restaurants by the side and all the beautiful um, scenery as well. So our campuses, we have um, different campuses and on the different campuses, we have different um, courses that are being taught on this campus. But the biggest of all uh, in the UK is the White Knights campus. That's the first one on my left. 
and it um, all, almost all courses are being taught in this campus for both um, for foundation, for undergraduate, postgraduate, uh, PGR, postgraduate research, PhDs are all taught on this campus. Uh, the London Road campus is, if you look at it, it looks a bit uh, old, the structure looks a bit old because that's where we started off as the University of Oxford Extension College. And so we maintained the building till now. Um, and this campus is where the, the internet phase is being situated. We also have um, students who are interested in studying architecture, or education. Uh, these are also being taught on this campus as well. We have the Greenland campus, which uh, we have the um, executive education being taught here. That's the first one on the left. And we also have the Malaysian campus, which is this on the right. So um, I had to streamline my presentation to fit my audience, which is um, speaking to Nigerian students. Uh, most Nigerian students come from um, Nigeria to the UK. And sometimes, especially if they don't have relatives around, they kind of feel left out. And so they would be really happy to make friends. And that's where our Nigerian Student Society comes into place. We have uh, over 136 students currently studying at Reading from Nigeria. Uh, although the University of Reading is a global university, so we attract lots of students from different parts of the world. But you are sure to not be the only Nigerian on campus. We have lots of activities uh, for the Reading University Nigerian Students um, Society. Just as the pictures you can see, some of these events are some of the pictures you can see. We also have um, a Facebook page strictly for um, Africans. So you could visit our Facebook page, which uh, the address is just going to be at the end of my presentation. So you be, be um, assured that you will not be the only one on campus and you definitely have opportunities to mix up and have friends. So an aerial view of the White Knight campus, which is the biggest campus of all, the 130 acres of land. As you can see, this is not the whole um, campus, it's just uh, where the shots could be taken from. Uh, uh, in this picture, you can find some of our um, accommodation. This is one step of accommodation right here. And uh, this is this lake is also on campus. And then we also have some academic buildings scattered here and the uh, uh, accommodations are also closer, built closer to the different departments based on students' preferences. So we have, uh, we can be sure that um, the social distancing rule will definitely be observed because we have lots, we also have all sports facilities, uh, you can see where my arrow is, and there's also some more on the other side where the screenshot couldn't cover. So, about our fees and scholarships. Um, I have to do it by range. So for arts, um, approximately students who want to study courses related to arts, uh, we're looking at 17,320 pounds for sciences, biomedical sciences, biomedical engineering, stuff like that, the courses like that, we offer within 20,830 pounds. And for business related subjects or courses, we offer around £18,760. Um, our scholarships are not automatic and um, they are not general scholarships. They are depend uh, departmental scholarships. And so students would have to apply for the course first and get an offer before they can apply for this scholarship. The scholarship ranges between £1,000 to £3,000. An example of these scholarships um, is the um, Architectural Scholarship, BSc Architecture. Uh, we have um, a thousand pounds that um, is being given to um, students who have been selected as beneficiaries of it and are being, um, it runs between the three years or throughout the three years of your study. So for every year you get 1,000 pounds discount. And that's just one example of the Defense Departmental Scholarship that we offer. So academic structure, we have four um, departments rather, and the arts, humanities, and social science. We have the science, we have the life sciences, we have the Henley Business School. Uh, we offer um, almost all the courses available. Uh, however, there are certain courses that we do not offer. And they are the, we don't offer pure medicine, but we do offer biomedical sciences. We do not offer um, journalism. We do not offer um, nursing. 
uh, we do not off also offer certain types of engineering. So if you're looking at studying uh, mechanical engineering, electrical, electronic engineering, we do not offer that. But we offer um, architecture engineering, we offer engineering um, related to biomedical engineering and construction engineering, stuff like that is what we offer. Uh, for that, we looking into real estate, um, surveying, um, we do offer those as well, apart from different orders, including law and computer science, like I mentioned earlier. So what support do we have for students? We have a whole lot of support for students. So I know parents are um, quite um, concerned about um, having the children focus on their studies, also have the experience of being in a university environment. We assign um, tutors to these students to help them make wise decisions when it comes to selecting their optional modules. And this tutor will be assigned when they get to um, the campus. We also have what we call the star mentors. The star mentors are for uh, the current students who are ready and happy to assist students wherever, um, in whatever capacity they can. So, and that's, they can start even right before they get to campus. They can start connecting with these current students right from when they're at home. And they can ask questions about almost anything, even including accommodation. We also offer um, services on the career advisory team. What they do basically is they help um, students um, prep them for um, getting introduced into the labor market quicker. So they help them, guide them on how to put together their CV, um, prep them on how to answer interviews questions. They also um, organize um, job fairs. They invite companies in and out of the UK to campus where students can mingle, ask questions and get contacts. And we also have the campus jobs for students who might want to work in school at the same time. We have several of them around campus and then they can um, get that um, opportunity if they wish. We also have the Red Award. So basically for students who might want um, um, an additional certificate which will help them give them an urge edge in the labor market. They are able to um, do some volunteering work and um, they will be issued a certificate, an official University of Reading Employability Skills Certificate uh, right after the round of that session. We have a whole lot of others. Uh, I'm just going to make it uh, as brief as I can. For accommodation, we have accommodation uh, on and off campus. We have about 5,000 rooms available for students. And it's basically um, based on the preference of the students. We have two categories, the catered and self-catered. So if students who might not be interested in cooking themselves, they will want the university to provide meals for them. We have several types of accommodation under that category. For those who can fend for themselves with really regard to feeding, we also have um, the self-catered option for them with different accommodations in that category. So all the students will have to do is uh, make sure they have decided on what type of accommodation they need. Um, they would also, everything uh, within the bills for the accommodation is all inclusive. So Wi-Fi, basic content insurance, utility bills, all of those are within the range of, um, within the costs um, tagged to the different accommodation. Now, how will students know if uh, it's time for them to apply or how would they see the different types of accommodations available. And that, that's why we have the Me at Reading portal. So for students who have applied for the 2020 entry, they will be, um, they should have already been able to access their Me at Reading portal. Very personalized, important information is going to be put on the Me at Reading portal um, where they can get even updates with regard to the COVID-19 pandemic, what structures are in place would also be sent there. They're also able to see the different types of accommodation and they can actually apply for the accommodation also through their portal. They could also find out more about their studies, find out what next um, is um, for them to do. And they're also able to um, raise questions directly um, with the relevant service. So also what uh, um, facilities are available on campus? So we have over 150 clubs and societies based on preference of students. I basically tell students that um, there's really no type of um, um, club or society you think of that we do not have at Reading. It's a whole lot. Uh, we also have a 24 li hour library 
available. We have different cafes and restaurants. We will have um, restaurants that sell Nigerian foods on campus. So don't be scared. You would definitely have um, opportunities to taste um, uh, um, Nigerian meals. We also have supermarkets to do some shopping if you wish. We have um, 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 we also, for we have the sports park available on campus as well and so many other including the medical centers which is uh, not too far from the campus. Uh, so this is just a screenshot to show um, how life is on campus on some of the just a, of a small section of the campus which comprises of um, park life we have some modern structures some old structures we have some um, relaxing gardens and a whole lot more so um, i was thinking of some of the things you might want to be updated on and I know the dates for a session is something that um, you might be interested in. So we are going to be resuming on the 28th of September, 2020. And um, the method of teaching will basically be a blended teaching. There will be opportunity for you to um, get classes online or participate in classes online. We also have um, a face-to-face -face session as well. So if you might not be able to um, be at the university in September. Um, you can also join the Welcome Week online. This is the first ever um, courtesy COVID-19. So um, you can have that opportunity um, to engage in all the activity, even though you are going to be connecting remotely. Um, however, all the core courses will be available online. So even though there will be a face-to-face -face session, um, you would also be able to um, connect as well. Um, and we ha also have access to the course content. So you can read ahead of time, you can make your research since you already have the course content online. Um, based on the UKVI rule, you would definitely be, for those who, would, who have decided to join us at Reading, um, you would be quarantined for two weeks before you were able to um, join the face-to-face -face sessions. And we, you can have the opportunity to do that um, in the halls of residence. Um, we are going to be taking taking some practical measures to make sure that even when you're in the halls, you would um, also be keeping some distance between you and other members uh, who are also um, in the halls as well. And we call that the households. Um, I think I'll talk a little bit more about that later. We're also, um, um, it's not also going to be a whole lock and key session. Um, we will have interactive sessions on campus online, like I said earlier. Um, our house of residence will be open, the library will, will be open. So please take note that even though these um, um, places will be open, um, we will still be putting some things in place to make sure that there's um, social distancing and the health and safety of everyone on campus is guaranteed. And we're also making sure that we uh, adhere to the government advice and make sure that we also give you the best education and university experience possible. So um, everything will be available. However, there will also be some restrictions and limitations sometimes when we have to do that. So um, we also know that based on the COVID-19, there's been some test of English that uh, has been um, suspended. Uh, and so we have looked into giving you um, option, options. Uh, we, have, we, have, we are accepting the Duolingo, Duolingo English test. And for different um, courses, we determine what grade we expect you to have. So um, I'm available. Please do let me know um, if once you get your offers and I can send you the specific requirements um, we expect you to have for the Duolingo English test. For we also add, um, accept the IELTS academic, that's a general IELTS academic, or the IELTS for UKBI themselves. If you also have um, GCSE English as a second language, so you IGCSE, you have a you have the English language, you have at least a grade B minimum. We also accept that. Um, WAG, NECO also have your English also in there. We also accept that. 
um, so useful resources for you to get more information. Yeah, let's not forget, we're also supposed to let you know about the uni body um, op um, provision. Unibody is um, where students can connect and chat with current students at Reading um, from where, from Nigeria, for instance. You can ask any question at all. They are also very happy to answer your questions. For our courses, we also have, um, op we have some um, provision which gives students the opportunity to have to do the IT placement or they can do the study abroad year. Study abroad year is a student who might want a more international perspective and might want to go out of the, um, the UK, maybe to Europe and study, maybe do one year of the courses interested in and come back to Reading and finalize his results. We also have the meet and greet, um, also some things we're putting in place for students who might be coming, who have decided to come to Reading. Um, we would be happy to welcome you back from the airport. We would also, once that has been finalized by the UK government, we would also be, um, for those who have not yet decided or have not made the application to Reading yet, you have the opportunity. And so we're available at Clary. You can set, we have a form on our website and where you can fill up um, the necessary information and apply directly to us. And if you meet the requirements, we will definitely send you an offer. So um, we hope to see you soon. And this is how my contact is still. So if you have more questions, please do let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Udo. Thank you so much. Next for the presentation will be Annabelle, Nottingham Trent University. So Annabelle, okay. please can you unmute your mic and share your screen? Thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. Um, I'm just attempting to share my screen, so hopefully you'll be able to see that soon. Yes, we can see your screen. Is that all good? Brilliant. Um, so yeah, good morning. My name is Annabelle University. We've worked with Bridge House College for many years now and received a number of students over the years. Um, normally I'd probably be in Nigeria um, around now coming to the Bridge House College graduation. Um, but instead I'm going to be telling you a little bit more about the university and how we've reacted to COVID um, in this presentation. So I will try and be quick. Um, or as quick as I can, and then obviously answer any questions at the end. So, okay, so what you can see here is Nottingham Trent University um, where we first started. So that's our Arkwright building. So that was built in 1843, and that's where we started as a school of architecture, design, and the built environment. And then we've grown. Um, Oh, sorry. And then we've grown and grown over the years um, and we're now um, University of the Year 2019. So first of all, um, where Nottingham Trent's based is in the heart of the UK, so right in the centre. It's about two hours away from London and then about two hours away from kind of all major cities like Manchester, Sheffield, Leeds, York and Oxford. Um, and I would say we're a medium sized city. So um, we've got a population of just over 300,000 and about 60,000 of those students, um, sorry, 60,000 of the population is students. So between ourselves and the University of Nottingham, we have 30,000 students each. So it's a hugely vibrant city. Um, so <clears throat> when students are studying with us, they really kind of feel at home because it's a medium sized city, but it has a compact city centre and our biggest campus, the city campus is based right in the city centre. So students can walk around, pretty much everyone they'll see will be a student um, or maybe a member of staff or something like that when they're on our city campus and there's all sorts going on. So there's a real kind of um, relaxed vibe and there's something for everyone, whether it's sports whether it's independent eateries and shops and things like that um, and we are I know someone said they were home to the Avengers we are home to Batman's Wayne Manor um, I haven't actually included a picture I wish I had now um, but yeah we have Wayne Manor um, where Batman the Dark Knight Rises was filmed um, 
So a little bit about our campuses. So we have three main campuses and the biggest one is our city campus. Um, so this is home to um, about 16,000 students and it also houses our business school, School of Art and Design, School of Architecture, Design and Built Environment, the Law School, Social Sciences and our Centre for Broadcast Journalism. So as you can see that's a number of schools that we have there. Um, not all of them and they're on our other campuses but you can see that we do offer a really wide range of courses and we probably offer most courses other than medicine so we have a lot of science courses but we don't have the medical course um, to go on to become a doctor everything else we pretty much offer um, so Clifton is where um, we house our science and technology courses so we do have things like biomedical sciences um, we have chemistry, physics, we have computing, engineering, a big, big engineering school. Um, so there's all sorts of things within our School of Science and Technology. We have an Institute of Education and Arts and Humanities. Um, now, as you can probably see from the picture, um, we have had a multi-million pound investment programme in Clifton campus and across all of our campuses, actually. Um, so we have spent about 450 million pounds over the past 10 years on our estate. So anyone um, visiting or studying at the university will really be able to see that. And although we do have um, some kind of older, more uh, sort of beautiful buildings, um, which have a lot of heritage and history. We have these amazing um, sort of world-class facilities as well, which we spent a lot of our time and money on. Um, our third campus is Brackenhurst, and this is about 45 minutes outside of the city centre. And this is home to our School of Animal, Rural and Environmental Sciences. Um, so if anyone's interested in geography, um, zoo biology, anything like that, that would be the place for you. It is our smallest campus in terms of number of students. So we have about a thousand students, um, but it's very, very big and it's set among, um, oh, I can't remember what the exact figure is, but there's a working farm and there's lots of beautiful countryside there. So in terms of YNTU, um, it's difficult to know where to start really because we've, we've won so many accolades over the past few years. Um, so in 2019, 2018 and 2017, we actually won a University of the Year Award, which we're really, really proud of. We are a top 20 university in the Guardian rankings. So this year we are 12th. Um, we are recommended by 93% of our students in student survey. Um, and we scored the fourth highest score in the National Student Survey, um, the most recent one in 2018. So we're doing really, really well. Um, and as well as kind of all the um, other things that we do in terms of all the placements we offer and things like that, our teaching, which is the, obviously the heart of everything, um, is excellent so our teaching uh, we were awarded a tf so tf framework is teaching excellence framework gold so that's the highest you can get so we're really really proud of that um, and alongside the teaching we have lots of um, professional body accreditations so across all of our different courses where possible um, we or where where there is an accreditation um, then we will have that accreditation so whether a student wants to do architecture um, these courses are all um, rebra accredited um, other courses for example if you're doing a business course you might be doing marketing it's got a cim uh, accreditation that also gives you things like exemptions from additional qualifications afterwards so it's really useful when students are looking to choose their courses that they check that the courses have those accreditations and pretty much all of our courses do so these things I've talked about in terms of the excellent teaching, in terms of accreditations and things like that, that is how we have a 97% employability rate um, for students after six months of graduating, um, or they might be in further study. So as well as all the other things I've said, um, we also offer things like work placements. So we offer usually a one year work placement on our undergraduate courses. So that comes after the second year. Um, and we are top five in the UK for the number of students in undergraduate work placements. So that means that students can gain, as well as all the academic experience, they're gaining um, kind of hands-on work experience. So when they come to graduate, they are set 
you know, they set the bar higher than a lot of their peers because they have that. Um, so we have about 6,000 plus partnerships with countries, sorry, with companies um, in the UK and throughout the world. Um, and we run lots of things like recruitment fairs. So throughout the year, students will be able to go to specific recruitment fairs for their courses. Um, and they're run by our employability team. They can also help with things like CV um, writing, interview techniques, um, and also finding students part-time jobs. So it's not just about getting the job at the end of the um, degree. They can help you to get a part-time job to kind of help with living expenses whilst you're studying. And that employability help is available for up to three years after students have graduated. So it's a really worthwhile um, thing that we offer. In terms of entry requirements, um, I think the same as most of the other universities which we've talked um, to and which you've heard from, um, we offer, we kind of accept all different types of um, backgrounds um, and we welcome lots of students each year, like I said, from the Bridge House A level and also the University Foundation programme. Um, if students don't meet the entry requirements that they see advertised, um, then they can still get in touch with us because, as you probably know, we do have clearing where some of our courses will lower in terms of entry requirements. So they can always get in touch with me or um, one of my colleagues and we can have a look at their final results and we can see if there's any courses that are suitable. In terms of English language, I think everyone's mentioned we do accept quite a number of different tests. Um, so we accept the WIAC, the NICO, IGCSE, IELTS, TOEFL, which also now has a special home edition. Um, and we've also introduced this year to try and help with kind of difficulties for people who wanted to access an IELTS test. We've introduced a free test, which is in conjunction with Kaplan, and that's called the KITE um, Test of English. So if any, any student doesn't have any of those um, qualifications which are listed, they can get in touch with us and we can set them up with a free kite test um, so I'll put my contact details in at the end. In terms of fees and scholarships um, the fees for this year are £14,500 um, and if you're looking at next year we haven't um, announced the fees for next year but they should be fairly similar. Um, in terms of scholarships as well, um, each year we offer Bridge House College a scholarship fund um, which is kind of allocated and they choose to um, allocate that how they wish. Um, and we also have different scholarships that we offer which are kind of competitive so students do apply for those. So we have an undergraduate scholarship which is £2,000 per year um, kind of fee reduction. We have an international scholarship which is £2,000 off the first year of study. There is an international full fee scholarship um, which is obviously highly competitive um, but students can just do one application and they will be assessed for each of these scholarships available and the other thing we have um, which we introduced a couple of years ago is our sub-saharan africa siblings loyalty reward um, and that is 25 percent off the first year of study so we found that we were getting actually also from bridge house um, we were getting students who were coming um, one year and then the sibling who was younger would follow them a year later or a couple of years afterwards and we really wanted to kind of um, thank them for the loyalty that they showed to NTU so we give a 25% discount um, for the student coming or if there are any students who are twins or triplets or whatever or they happen to be coming at the same time they would both benefit from that 25% discount. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about support at NTU. Obviously, um, we've always offered a really, really good, robust support system, including things like um, academic support, financial, we have a dedicated international student support team and health and wellbeing and things like that. That. Um, and even more so now, I know there will be concerns from parents and students in the current climate, but we're doing everything we can to make students feel as safe as possible. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about that now. Um, again, similar to what other universities are doing, um, but we expect all of our campuses to be open for the autumn term. So that's in September. I think our start date is around the 27th of September. Um, and we will, will be offering kind of blended learning. So it's a mixture of on-campus teaching alongside online learning. Online learning is something we have always offered um, or always expected of students when they get to university level um, because it's kind of self-directed learning. So things like reading, research, doing assignments and things like that. And I know students have already 
kind of always spent a lot of their time in the libraries again open 24 hours um, but they've always done that um, so that's something which we're, we're pushing more but it's, it's not a new thing um, and the way we're designing um, our courses for this particular year is that um, I think as Melissa was saying we're not going to have huge groups of people in lectures as we sometimes used to that's either going to all be done online or that's going to be split up into smaller groups um, but students will I know there's probably con some concern from students that maybe are doing things like a science course or something which has quite a bit of a practical element students are still going to have access to those facilities to the specialist facilities such as laboratories and studio space but we're just going to be doing this differently and, and carefully managing it to ensure that social distancing is possible within those um, so it's going to look a little bit different but we are going to ensure that the high quality teaching um, which has got us that TEF gold is very much still there um, so just a bit kind of more specifically in terms of how we're going to keep students safe on campus um, is that we're designing new layouts in classrooms um, kind of facilities to support um, active collaboration in a safe environment and as I said this includes specialist facilities that we have timetabling um, will be changed so that it allows for social distancing um, we are where possible going to keep students in consistent groups so that you're not kind of mingling with a huge number of different people um and we're going to be introducing just simple things like one-way traffic flows around buildings having signage up having hand sanitizer um having sensor control taps um, and everything like that so these are all fairly simple things but hopefully they will help to make students feel really safe um, whilst they're on campus um, we are also offering a meet and greet service um, as we always do each year so we are introducing an extra stop on that we've always just done the meet and greet service from Heathrow this year we're going to do it from Birmingham as well um, and Birmingham is the closest international airport to Nottingham and it's about one hour away um, so hopefully this free airport service um, can help students kind of have as smooth a journey as possible to Notting Trent um, and we are going to ask people to aim to arrive two weeks early to allow time for quarantine if in fact it is still in place come September um, and then in terms of accommodation um, like other universities again we are offering students um, two weeks of free accommodation at our Brackenhurst campus so that beautiful campus that you saw which was set in the countryside we are actually going to be housing students um, there so those are for students who have already booked into Nottingham Trent um, accommodation so they'll get free accommodation there for two weeks and also um, free food as well so um, they're going to have a fully stocked uh, kitchen and freezer um, to keep them safe during that period um, and then once that quarantine period's over they'll just then move into their booked accommodation we're also in touch with private providers to ensure that they have ability, uh, availability for international students to quarantine as well so we're working really hard on that and hopefully we'll be able to communicate those um, outcomes very very soon um, and just a little bit more about accommodation so obviously there's NTU accommodation and private accommodation um, some of our NTU accommodation in fact a lot of it is booked up um, just because of the time of year but we can help you so if you get in touch with us at africa at ntu.ac.uk we can help you to source private accommodation as well which is really a very similar setup to our accommodation any students who might be worried about not being able to travel in September um, we're hoping that that won't affect many students but if it does and um, we're working really really hard um, to come up with options for that so obviously one option is that you could defer to next year um, but what we are trying to do is um, put in place something like a kind of a system which allows you to start online and then join us on campus when you are able to so that's if for example the borders weren't open or something like that so if um, covid meant that you physically weren't able to get to campus you would be able to enroll online um, and start your classes and then as soon as you can join us um, in person you can do that so we're working on the full details at the moment and we will share those on our website as soon as possible and on all of these slides you can see at the bottom there's um, an ntu.ac.uk slash coronavirus um, 
kind of short handle. If you go on there, there's lots and lots of information to have a read through and hopefully make you feel a bit safer about September. So I've really, really quickly gone through the university, um, what you can expect and things like that. But obviously I can only show you so much. So if you really want to find out more, get yourself immersed in the campuses, then we have a virtual tour, which is available online. So you can go on there, it's 3D. You can do virtual tours of accommodation as well. Um, from the comfort of your own home. So please do have a look at that. It's just on our website. So www.ntu.ac.uk slash virtual tour. And then you can have a look at our different campuses. Um, remember um, to have a look on the course page to check which campus you'll be studying on because um, it could be City, it could be Clifton or it could be Brackenhurst. So make sure you check that. And then finally, um, if you do have more questions, obviously you'll be able to ask them in the Q&A session that we're going to have after this. Um, but if there are any questions which we don't get around to ask, uh, answering, or if there's anything you want to follow up afterwards, please do take a note of our email address, which is africa at ntu.ac.uk. So um, that's the team that deal with um, students applying from Africa. Um, and you can also see my colleague Wale there. So Wale is based in Lagos. Um, so he works very closely with Bridge House. Unfortunately, he couldn't um, attend the webinar today, but he is available um, and he can talk to you over the phone and things like that if you want have a, a chat um, so we are always here to help um, and I think that's me done so thank you so much everyone um, and hopefully we'll have lots of good questions at the end thank you thank you Annabelle thank you for your presentation just before we start the Q&A section may I request that our participants our guests um, can you just show your share your screen for your contacts? Annabelle has done so. I don't think I saw Melissa's contact. Melissa, I don't yeah. know. Okay, Melissa, please can you share your contact um, for the participants? Because I know you might be happy. I'll share it. If I share it in the chat, that might be easier. Okay, just hold on. Let me enable the chat for everyone. Um, okay, so because I know Melissa will be having another Zoom meeting soon. So just in case anyone has a um, question for University of Southampton, you could... That's, um, a, that's okay. I can, I can stay a bit longer. I've adjusted the other meeting because I... Oh. I've experienced enough of these to know that they tend to overrun. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Thank you for that. So okay. um, let me enable for anyone, for any other parents who are here, please you could um, raise your hands for your direct question and it will be answered. But before then, um, some couple of questions have been coming on. And uh, let me read it for your hearing. Um, this is for Sheffield. They are asking, and it reads, I have registered for accommodation, but I am an international student. Will there be an online class until it's convenient to travel? I also wish to understand the completing process of applying for accommodation as well. That's for Dami and Adam. I know you've mentioned about the blended online classes, but they would like to know in terms of the accommodation, can they still register for accommodation? Um, hello, can you see me? Yeah. Um, I hope you hope you can hear me anyway. Yeah. So uh, accommodation, as uh, Dami mentioned in the in the presentation earlier, um, as long as you apply for your accommodation before the thirty first of August, then you'll be guaranteed accommodation in the University of Sheffield. Um, so that's part of our accommodation guarantee. And um, as I said as well, you'll get the um, two weeks that you might need to self isolate if that legislation, if that policy is still in place. Um, you'll get that entirely free. 
Um, with regard to registering and completing the payments and um, reserving your place with accommodation, that needs to be done entirely with the accommodation office. But um, if the person who's asked the question wants to contact us directly um, with their student details, um, then we can we can see about helping them. We can support their um, their communication with the accommodation office. Um, yeah, so my email was mentioned at the end of the the uh, presentation. It's adam .r .brown. Um, but um, if you want to leave me your contact details, then we can also contact you on that one. Um, yeah, as, as you mentioned, we will be offering the blended learning. So we're utilizing um, the news portal, which is my University of Sheffield um, online environment. And that is an online teaching environment that we've had for, for several years, um, which we've used to support the teaching in the university. And now it's becoming more important. So um, a lot of the lectures that you would normally attend um, in person, you'll be doing entirely online. Um, if your course is, uh, has an element of laboratory work, you will still have access to laboratories, um, but they will be in a socially distant manner, in an appropriate manner, um, uh, by which we'll have reduced class sizes for the, for the laboratories. So yes, yeah, so there'll be the, the two main learning modes for both postgraduate and undergraduate students. But yeah, if you want to contact me um, with details about your application, then we'd be very happy to help you with anything with the accommodation. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. Thank you, Adam. Um, another question is for Melissa. Um, this question reads, um, this is for the University of Southampton. She mentioned mm -hmm. something about clearing. Can you give, can she give a brief run on it? So what the student wants to find out is how can they apply for clearing? I understand how to apply, but I need you to um, explain that for the student, Melissa. Okay, um, so we have a international clearing hotline, so students can um, call us directly and you'll get through to either me or one of my colleagues in the international office. Um, we take all of your details over the phone uh, and we submit those through. If you meet our conditions, we can make you um, an offer at the time of the phone call. Um, that is then followed up with um, the official letter, um, which would be an offer in principle uh, based on you taking further action. For example, um, if you haven't yet applied for UCAS um, or you um, need to refer yourselves to us in clearing um, or you're holding an offer elsewhere and you've decided that you would prefer to go to Southampton for your studies. Um, so we'll guide you through that whole process um, and it gives you the option to consider other places that previously you may not um, have been reviewing. So uh, we'll be able to indicate on the phone whether you are being made an offer, whether we're referring you to the admissions tutor for further consideration uh, or whether unfortunately we would be unable to make you an offer. So you would get um, a full explanation during the phone call as to what the next steps are. Um, and that applies for all subject areas um, except for medicine. So for any of our courses, um, the full list of our course vacancies is on our website. If you go to southampton.ac.uk uh, forward slash clearing, uh, there's a button there with a, a world, uh, a globe on it, um, which says international clearing, and it takes you through to all of the details. You don't have to phone us if you don't want to. You can uh, message us on WhatsApp. Uh, you can message us on Facebook Messenger. Um, so there are lots of different uh, ways that you can connect with us. Um, and if you contact us on Facebook Messenger, you'll definitely get me because I'm managing that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. So um, this is for, let me see. Okay, this is for Nottingham Trent. Annabelle, someone is asking, is it possible to do a joint course? So I think the person needs to, wants to combine courses in terms of BSc mm -hmm. in, so please, can okay. you put, put a light on that? Yeah. Um, 
it is possible in some circumstances. So in our School of Arts and Humanities, we do have um, some joint courses. So that usually is when students, it is obviously specifically within arts and humanities. So it's things like languages. Um, it might be things like media and communication, history, English. So those are the types of courses within arts and humanities, which you can do as kind of a joint honours. So you can combine those. We do also have some within the business school, so they're joint honours, so you do something um, like business management and then you can do a joint honours of business management and either marketing, economics, um, accounting and finance, uh, human resource management and things like that. So specifically in specific areas you can, however if you decided to do something like um, you know, I'm trying to think like graphic design and biomedical sciences, you wouldn't be able to do that. Um, so if they're quite far apart, you can't. If they're within the same school, yes, you can. Um, so I don't know who it was that's asking, but if there is anything specific that you're thinking of, you can always um, drop me a message either in the chat on here um, or separately to the Africa at ntu.ac.uk um, email address and I can chat to you a little bit more. Okay, thank you. Then there no is problem. another question for NTU. They okay. need more clarification regarding the acceptance rate. Um, okay. the entry, so please put a light on your requirements and acceptance rates. On the requirements. Yeah. Um, so um, we have set requirements for the Bridge House College Foundation Programme. I don't have those in front of me right now, actually, um, but it just it depends on um, which course you're doing. Um, so whichever course you've applied to. Many of our courses don't require you to get specific grades in specific modules or subjects. Um, but if you're doing something like a science, um, obviously you would need to have a specific um, grade in something like biology or chemistry. Um, on our acceptance rate, if you've been made an offer, provided you get the results, then you will be accepted and you will secure a place onto the course. Um, if you don't, then I think sort of throwing back to what Melissa was saying about clearing, there is still a possibility because we do um, every August time once the UK level results come out, we look at what everyone scored and then sometimes we may lower the entry requirements for specific courses. So there is definitely still a chance that you may be able to come to us, even if you've been made an offer and you don't necessarily get the entry requirements that were for the offer, or if you've not made an offer, uh, sorry, you've not made an application to us, um, again, you may still be able to come to us with your grades. So don't immediately think, oh no, I've, I've not made it. When you look at your results, um, there's often a chance that you'll be able to come to us. So I think it's more on an individual basis, like a case by case. Um, so I can't comment on exactly what, we don't have like an overall entry requirement. Um, so again, please do get in touch with me if you want to discuss it in, in more detail. Okay. Okay, so another question is for you, just to follow up to that, because I know for NTU, you, uh, you need um, a minimum deposit before the yeah. conditional offer can be unconditional. Yes. But now, this parent would like to know what process would they need to get to get the letter, um, the bank letter, or the invoice mm. to make payments. Okay. Um, yeah, so we do specifically for Nigerian applicants, we do bank letters. Um, so again, if you drop us an email with, um, if, if they're an offer holder and they have an NTU ID, if you put that in or just the full name, then what we'll be able to do is send you a bank letter. So that um, outlines the fees and um, kind of what, what it is you need to pay. So it's a £3,000 deposit. Um, just to know if anyone applies through clearing, um, then the deposit isn't actually required to become unconditional. Um, so that's slightly different in that respect. But yeah, um, requests for bank letters, please do send. I've, I've put the Africa email address in the chat. Um, so send it over and we'll get that out to you as soon as we can. Okay, so in terms of those who would be eligible for scholarship, I know you would communicate that to them once mm. um, the time is set, right? <laughs> 
Yeah, our scholarships for this year, the deadline was the 1st of July, so unfortunately they have closed. Um, but students who are offer holders hopefully have already applied. So they should find out towards the end of July whether they were successful. Um, and there was also a, a Bridge House scholarship yeah. fund as well. So um, that will be allocated and students will find out if they've been a recipient of that soon as well. Good, thank you. Um, no problem. Another question. I think the person is just following up with <laughs> my daughter's accommodation through, though booked through NTU accommodation, but it is private. How do you handle the quarantine okay. and the payment for housing for the two for the free two weeks? Should okay, I so so the two weeks of accommodation free at Brackenhurst campus is for students who um, are have NTU accommodation booked. For private accommodation, um, we are working with the private providers um, to put something in place. So we're, we're kind of waiting for them to tell us what it is they've put in place. So I don't have that information right now. Um, so I can try and follow up on that for you. We work closely with the accommodation team um, to ensure that students are going to be in a position to have somewhere to stay for those two weeks. So again, I think if it is if it is all the same person um, asking these questions, yeah, please the do person. contact me. Yeah. yeah, please do contact me directly and I'll be able to give you um, a much more specific answer um, and we can keep in touch and I can also put you in touch with Wale who's, who's in Lagos as well. Um, so yeah, hopefully we can help you with all of this. Okay, thank you Annabelle. Uh, Thank the you. next question is for University of East Anglia and the person wants to find out what would happen to the resumption date of, um, okay, if embassies do not open until late August. Debbie, that question is for you. This person wants to find out mm -hmm. what would happen to the yeah. resumption date if the embassies do not resume until late August. I know you did mention about um, six weeks of uh, yeah. extension, so please. Okay, so I'll just reiterate that. Maybe he didn't hear when I, when I did the presentation. Yeah. Um, so if the, the high committee, if the special applic visa application center does not open till late August, that means that you probably will not get your visa until like maybe October, by the time you put in your application. And we've factored all of that in, and that's why we decided to have a late start date up to six weeks from when students um, are supposed to resume. So you have up to six weeks to arrive on campus from the 28th of September, which culminates into, I think, second week of November, which is like more than enough time for you to apply for the visa and arrive. Um, depending when you're doing that, you can also register and start your course online. Um, so you don't miss out on classes, you don't miss out on um, assignments that and, and assignments that you need to do. So you're still part of the class, you're still you've registered for your course and you're you've already started, but you just are doing it remotely and online, and then you can join us when you get your visa um, by the sixth week. Um, I think we can also be a bit flexible, but you need to have carried us along. So if, for example, you put in your application ahead of time, and for some reason there is a delay and you can't join in September, then you can come and start in January. Okay, but you, I mean, we need to see that you had started the process and it wasn't your fault that you couldn't join, even with the six weeks extension. We need to know that you had started the process and probably were delayed at, you know, the, uh, the UKBI delayed issuing your visa or something of the sort. Then you can do the first term online and then join in, in January. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank, Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Okay, so um, this is another question for Sheffield, Un University of Sheffield. Um, this person wants to find out, I know you did make mention of your flexibility. Now, the person doesn't have the original YX certificate, and I think is among the, the, the conditional requirement that this person needs to provide the original YX certificate. So in a place where the original YX certificate is not available, what um, other documents can you substantiate in place of the original YX certificate? Dami, can you um, put your answers to that question? 
Hey, yeah, so um, the truth is we, we do need um, to see that document. However, um, I think we can, if, if they have a scratch card, I think it is, um, you know, we can try to verify it. Okay. Um, and then obviously, you know, from their school, um, they can also provide transcripts and so on, um, you know, letterheaded that we can also look at. But we just need to verify that the document or that the YEC is genuine. So once they're able to provide us with um, sort of a scratch card that the admissions team can use to verify the results, then we can use that. Okay, okay. Thank you, Dami. No um, problem. Thank you. So um, another question, this is for everyone. This person wants to find out can they apply only through UCAS to your schools or is there any other method of application outside UCAS? Dami, please, can you, since you're still on, can you just respond then? Other unis will respond as well. Okay, so um, yes, for undergraduates though, they do need to apply um, via UCAS. However, for postgraduates, they can apply directly on our website. Um, it's easy, any course that they um, want, um, once they go on that, on the page for the course, there will usually be um, a very clear button saying um, apply, um, so they can click on that and, and just apply directly on the website. But for undergraduates, um, they would need to go via UCAS. Okay, so writing, how do they apply? Do they strictly apply through UCAS or through, um, is there a direct link for undergraduates? Yeah, so they would need to apply through UCAS, but for clearing, um, they would I can apply on our website, which is of course available, very simple form, uh, but they would also be sent a link to get a UCAS ID to process. So it's basically it's also through that platform. Okay, thank you. I think same would apply to Southampton. Melissa, can you confirm that? Uh, it does. And just to be clear to, to everyone, um, and this applies to all, all of us, um, the UCAS application system, when we sign up to it, we sign up to say that all undergraduate applications will come via UCAS. Um, so it's actually a legal contractual requirement that we accept applications via UCAS. Um, so it's not us trying to be difficult. Um, it's us adhering to, to policies. There are some small circumstances where we can take direct applications often for foundation entry. Um, but when it comes to sort of year one entry for UCAS, it, it's incredibly difficult for there to be a workaround. Um, clearing is the one time we can do it slightly differently, but it does eventually result in essentially a UCAS application either way. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, and to you, there is another question regarding invoicing for accommodation. Um, Annabelle, please, can you advise how they get the invoice for accommodation if it was provided by, if, if they did apply to a private provider? Okay. Um, I can't really comment on private providers because I, I think they all have their own um, separate process for that. Um, I imagine there's probably a booking fee that they would need to pay. Um, I mean, ours is £200. It's, it's normally fairly small, like a small booking fee. Um, and then I think you can probably set up payment instalments um, in the same way that you do for tuition fees, so you don't have to pay it all in one lump sum. Um, but you would need to contact the private provider directly for that information. Okay. Okay, so thank you. I think we've um, actually spent quite a lot of time and I know our guest um, speakers have actually put their contact details for us. As a follow-up, please, if you have further questions, you could, um, uh, okay, you could ask them. But before then, please, um, and, um, University of East Anglia, can you put a light on how they can apply to um, UEA? So parents and uh, prospective students can also um, have an idea of applying to UEA? Okay, so basically for undergraduate students, <clears throat> you apply via UCAS and of course during clearing you can apply directly to us and we'll be able to do that. Ultimately, it goes on to UCAS um, 
or we will not put you on UCAS if you apply directly. For PG students, you can apply directly. You don't have to go through UCAS, except for some um, health courses, which we don't have any control over. You definitely have to go through UCAS for that. Okay, okay. So thank you for your active participation to all our um, participants and our university representative. This will be coming to an end and um, I sincerely wish all our prospective students and current students all the best. I know they'll be graduating soon and um, their graduation will be a virtual graduation and would we'll also extend the invite to our partners and um, our parents as well. So thank you once again for you honoring our invitation. I wish you all well. University of East Anglia, thank you so much, Miss Debbie. O thank you, Inyola. University of Reading, Udochi, thank you so much. Adam, <laughs> thank good to you. see you once again. I hope when, become, when the travel restrictions are lifted, would like to put a face, more physical face to your presence. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Dami. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Alicia. Yeah. Have Thanks, a Daniela. weekend all. Thank you. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you so much. You too. Have Bye. a good weekend. Bye-bye. Bye. So once again, to all our parents, um, for those of you who would like to have, um, since the schools are offering blended webinar blended online classes. Bridgehouse College would be opening the study centers for any students who would like to use the library during this blended um, classes organized by the university. Just in case you want to register, be assured that the school would support your child's online classes in school so you don't have any cost to worry about your child's concentration and all that. So the principal has made me to announce this to you and um, just as a way of support for all our students that will be graduating. Please be rest assured, the school will be there to assist you as it may be. Thank you once again and God bless.